You are not permanently damaged. You can heal part of yourself no matter what the trauma was that occurred to hurt you. You can make changes today. Part of healing is self-care. Self-care refers to the intentional actions individuals take to prioritize and maintain their physical, mental, and emotional well-being. It involves engaging in activities and practices that promote overall health and reduce stress. Self-care can vary widely from person to person, as it is a highly individualized concept based on one's preferences, needs, and circumstances. I had to truly learn this from ground zero, and I work at it every day. It does not come naturally to me to care for myself. So I put it on my calendar to do certain things each day that I need to be mindful of. I'm going to go over some ways to focus on your physical self-care, mental self-care, emotional self-care, your social self-care, and last but not less than any of the others is spiritual self-care. So starting with physical self-care. Prioritize sleep. This is a hard one. Aim for seven to nine hours of quality sleep each night for better overall health. Sometimes we drown ourselves in streaming Netflix or other services to avoid night terrors or the weakness of lying down or not to think about loss. Currently, I have insomnia and cut caffeine out months ago due to my migraines, so I'm unsure what is causing it. I tend to just lay in bed with my eyes wide awake, so to change my energy, I meditate at night when I'm struggling to shut down. If I'm not getting sleep, at least I'm getting some health benefits. Unplug before bed. Create a calming bedtime routine and avoid screens at least an hour before sleep. It is important. Practicing good hygiene. Ways to begin practicing good hygiene start with taking a shower daily. Brush your teeth twice a day. Those seem so basic, but when you're in a place of despair, pain, and emotional agony, taking care of yourself is hard. Do everything in your power to get up and take a shower each day, or do it at night before you go to bed in a ritualistic way so that you are washing the day off of you. I'm a morning showerer due to my pain level physically. When I wake up, a shower relaxes my muscles so I can be a useful human that day. Move your body. Regular exercise. I'm sure to many that sounds miserable. To some, it might be your outlet currently. Good for you if it is. If you're not exercising consistently, find ways to begin incorporating it into your life. A walk around the block to get some fresh air. Do squats and lunges as you stand in front of the stove cooking. Play video games that get you moving. Beat Saber, Supernatural, so on. I have incorporated yoga into my weekly exercise. You get so much more with yoga for your mental well-being. Try it at least once a week. I will link to some videos. Eat healthier. So McDee's is never going to be healthy. And if you're fighting depression or anxiety currently, the first thing I'd look at is your diet. Highly processed foods, which are all fast food restaurants other than Parsa Taco Bell's menu, are setting yourself up for crappy health, and it highly affects your mental state. For myself personally, I had to take control of my eating. I lifted weights, ran on the treadmill, and ate what I thought was healthy based on my macros and calories. But I was still physically unhealthy, and my weight just kept creeping up until I looked like I was six months pregnant. I don't drink, so I couldn't blame the beer. My doctor said my current diet was healthy, and I didn't need to see a nutritionist. So he prescribed me one of the current weight loss home shots that I gave myself daily. I didn't lose a pound after injecting myself daily for six months. Ugh. I'm just lucky my organs didn't fail me. After taking me off of the diet stabs, he gave me a seizure drug to treat my migraines, which he promoted as having weight loss as a side effect. Um, no thanks. So I went on an elimination diet and found so far after a month of being on this diet that tomatoes, potatoes, corn, flour, soy are all causes for my migraines. The worst trigger is food coloring. You'd be surprised in how many weird places I found food coloring in my diet. Corn and soy are almost impossible to get rid of in the American diet. I found a farm with corn and soy-free eggs nearby that I hope to check out this week. Whatever is in the diet of the animal you're eating from is in your diet. Something to remember. The only dye-free aspirin I could find has corn in it. I dropped 30 pounds in the first month on the elimination diet. So far, it has been worth it. I feel so much better. Sadly, my physical pain has not changed. I am going to continue this way of eating for at least a year to see what kind of changes to my health I might receive. 
I'll talk more about the elimination diet in another video explaining what I do actually eat. Hydrate. Drink enough water throughout the day to support your physical and mental functions. Consider getting a Berkey filter for your water at home. This removes the fluoride and plastics in your water. You will taste and feel the difference. In research, I found that coffee contains a ton of mold, and what does not pass in other countries gets sent to America because we have lower mold standards for our food. I had no idea that coffee was full of mold. I knew tea and pesticides, but mold? Ew. And before you get started saying, oh, your favorite brand has no mold, I'm just going to stop you and say you're wrong. I did find mold-free lab-tested coffee on Amazon. It was pricey, so I chose to quit drinking coffee about three months ago and just switched to hot water. I have 100% seen a difference. Also, to not be dependent on any substance just feels better. And the money goes back in your pocket. Mental self-care. Set boundaries. Learn to say no and establish healthy boundaries to protect your time and energy because you need your time. Quality time alone is important, but not endless amounts. Enjoy moments of solitude to recharge and reflect. You don't need to be everyone's monkey. I understand caretaking another has its challenges as I watch my mom care for my stepdad who has Parkinson's at 83 years old. She does not get much downtime. She wakes up at 4 a.m. to ensure her alone time. Back to boundaries. If you have a toxic relationship or a homie that wants you to drink till you get pissed drunk every day, it's okay to be busy and say you don't feel well, so you can get some you time. Do not feel guilty for prioritizing yourself. I will say it again. Do not feel guilt for making yourself number one. Take breaks. Step away from work or stressful situations to refresh your mind. Walk outside to get some fresh air. Practice gratitude. I'm sure you're tired of hearing this one. But I am firsthand knowledgeable of the internal brain change I have made just by doing my grateful practice each day. I start in the morning. I'm so grateful my feet work today. I'm so grateful I have a bed. I'm so grateful I can breathe the air around me. I'm so grateful for the food I will eat today. I'm grateful for the stars, the sun, Mother Earth, Google, and YouTube. Reflect on the positive aspects of your life consistently to foster a positive mindset. If you can manage to find three things to be positive about in the morning, then add in the practice at night as you lay in bed drifting off to sleep. You too will begin to see a mental shift. I have been called negative Nikki in the past and my, now my name's just Nikki. Don't get overwhelmed. Set realistic goals. I have big dreams so I create my stress and pressure to push myself. Part of not losing my mind is to break down tasks into manageable steps to avoid feeling overwhelmed. Celebrate achievements. Acknowledge and celebrate your accomplishments, no matter how small. Most people never pat themselves on the back. Well, why the hell not? Let's take a moment. Good job, Nikki. Good job. Stimulate the brain. Engaging in activities that stimulate the mind can vary based on individual preferences and interests. I personally love Duolingo. It's a free app that I can learn new languages with. So currently I'm learning French, Russian, and Arabic. Here are some general examples of activities that are often considered to be mentally engaging and can help stimulate the mind. Reading, books, magazines, articles, and other written materials can provide mental stimulation. Puzzles and games. Crossword puzzles, Sudoku, chess, D&D, &D, Tetris, and other strategic games challenge the brain and promote problem-solving skills. Learning a new skill. Acquiring new skills, whether it's learning a musical instrument, a new language, or a craft, can engage the mind and enhance your cognitive abilities. I love YouTube and Udemy for this. Artistic activities. Engaging in creative pursuits such as drawing, painting, or crafting can stimulate the mind and foster self-expression. This is the one I'm really pushing myself to do. I have so much to paint and draw. I just procrastinate. I even was given a bunch of art supplies over the holiday. Mindfulness and meditation. Practices that promote mindfulness and meditation can improve focus, concentration, and overall mental well-being. I will link to some of my favorite YouTube meditations. If you are a beginner, check out my video on meditation. Physical exercise. Regular physical activity has been linked to cognitive benefits, including improved memory and mental clarity. You can hit the gym, go for a walk, do wall push-ups. If it's too cold or too hot outside, check out Get Fit with Rick. I'll link to him. He makes getting all your steps super fun. 
Yoga is amazing for your health. I will just keep saying it. I'm just going to keep saying it over and over. Scientific exploration. Watching documentaries, attending science lectures, or exploring scientific topics can provide mental stimulation and broaden your knowledge. TED Talks are on YouTube, Lewis Howe's School of Greatness, and the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. Those are great places to start. I'll link to all three. Now let's talk about emotional self-care. Laugh often. Find humor in everyday life and engage in activities that make you laugh. I personally have a built-in comedian inside of me. I laugh at my thoughts all day. Consider swapping your drama death-filled Netflix tonight with a comedy or a stand-up comedian instead. Just find ways to laugh. Journaling. I bought a pile of notebooks just to jot down my thoughts, giving me a place to process my feelings day to day. I also journal my dreams, my spiritual connections, and things I see or hear when I'm in meditation. Practicing mindfulness or meditation. Stay present in the moment, whether through meditation or mindful activities, but try to practice not zoning out when you're with friends and family. I struggle at this, so it's why I say it. Positive affirmations. Use positive affirmations to boost your self-esteem and cultivate a positive mindset. If you feel silly doing this, I'd like to say it's worth your time. Start by saying something really flattering or friendly to yourself each time you look in the mirror. Not an insult or a negative point of view. We all self-talk, so start talking to yourself as if you love yourself. A way to do this is to take care of the inner child in you and be kind and loving to that kid every damn day. Start now. Mel Robbins on YouTube has a high five thing where each time you look in the mirror, you high five yourself. How easy is that to create a silly moment that brings you joy? If needed, don't hesitate to seek the help of a therapist or counselor. And if the first therapist is not a match, don't just quit. Keep trying to find the best match for you. Digital detox. Set a time aside each day to disconnect from screens and technology. Oh man, where do I start with this one? Elon Musk says we're already cyborgs because we take our phones with us everywhere. It's funny for me to think that because Google's listening to me pee. I know they listen because my YouTube now has videos in Arabic in my suggested list. I never search for anything Arabic on my phone or my computer, but I'm taking Arabic lessons in Duolingo. Okay, so back to digital detox. The benefits are endless. It lowers your stress and anxiety. It improves your sleep. It increases your productivity and focus, improves your surrounding relationships, gives you back time to exercise and self-reflection. It improves your posture, getting rid of that dowager hump, which is also known as the tech hump. The biggest reason to put the phone down or turn the screens off is enhanced mental health. Woo! Getting offline can reduce feelings of inadequacy or negative self-perception associated with online interactions. I hope I'm not making you feel bad. Engaging in activities that bring joy and relaxation, like creative expression. Express yourself through art, writing, or any creative outlet that brings you joy. Read for pleasure. Escape into a good book for relaxation and mental stimulation. I'm sure you can think of a few things that bring you joy, but this is a list of some things that bring me joy. Sunshine, ocean trips, roller coasters, bowling, roller skating, air hockey, skeet shooting, target practice, dancing, shooting hoops, woodworking, and gardening. Where I live, it rains about 80% of the year, so sometimes I have to get more creative with my outside time in the non-sun months. Let's talk about social self-care. We went over this a bit before, but spending time with loved ones, I can't say it enough. If you have nobody in your life to feel loved towards, it's time to join life again. It could be by volunteering. It could be at church, reaching out to family you have not talked to in a very long time. Get on Ancestry.com and find your family. Or joining a club. If you're a man, I suggest joining the Masonics. Other clubs we can all join are the Elks Club, Car Clubs, Hiking Clubs. Craigslist community section, meetup.com, and Facebook events are great places to find local events and groups to join. Go forage for wild mushrooms with a group. You might like it. Nobody is forcing you to do anything, but I implore on you that going to work and coming home can't be your only life. You are a human, and in your human design, you need human connection. They have done the experiments on it. Not getting touched, loved, or supported slowly will kill us. 
join a tickle group or a hug club. Go talk to people at convalescent hospitals. Hear their stories. Get out of your stuck rut if you're in one. I'm a shy loner who's an extrovert and I can stay hidden all day, every day and be just fine. I know pushing myself out of my comfort zone is hard, but so far it's been worth it. Let's work on building and maintaining healthy relationships. Not much in this world is easy and we all know this being adults, but put the time into those relationships that you want to keep. Remember, you only get a short time with the humans in your life. Spend time with them. The point is just to start socializing. Don't go hog wild. Just make small weekly efforts towards building new and old relationships that are good for your health. If someone is trying to compete with trauma stories, walk the fuck away. If it's family who does not support or understand, ask them how to get them to support or understand you. Start the conversation in case there's a chance at saving that relationship. If they can't pull their heads out of their way, just take a break and try again another time. Let's talk about spiritual self-care. Engaging in spiritual practices or rituals is important. I get up every morning and say to myself what I'm grateful for, and I meditate with an intention or a question for my spiritual guides. You can go to church, but don't zone out or fall asleep. Be there and be present. You can pray daily if this is a better fit for you, and you can do that most anywhere. My beliefs when it comes to spirituality, we are not alone. We are surrounded by entities, those who have passed, and those from other galactic places. And we are given direct access to Source, the Divine. We can all talk to our spirit guides, connecting with a higher power in nature. I'm a fan of Gaia, Mother Earth, as she keeps me grounded. A short note on grounding. I will teach more in another video. Plant your feet on the floor firmly and imagine roots growing from your feet through the floor into the earth. This is one way to stay grounded that I use daily. I also use it when visiting with negative energies. You might call that family. It keeps me from being hurt. Many people feel a sense of connection with a higher power when surrounded by nature. Spending time outdoors, observing the beauty of the natural world, and contemplating the vastness of the universe can be very spiritually enriching. Walk on the grass. Go sit at a park. Go for a hike. Sit by the river. Garden by sticking your hands in the soil. Nourish your soul. Mindful breathing. Take short breaks to focus on your breath promoting relaxation and stress reduction. Remember self-care is a personal journey and it's essential to tailor these tips to fit your individual needs and preferences. Consistently incorporating self-care practices into your routine can lead to improved overall well-being. Remember not to overwhelm yourself with this huge list of to-dos. Try incorporating one thing a week or a month to work at your own self-care. You are not permanently damaged. I love you. And remember, I'm here to hold your hand on your spiritual journey. I'm Nikki Diamond with Finding My Third Eye.